First, familiarize yourself. Look at the detailed computer-generated installation plan to see where all elements should be positioned. Mark the position of the thermostat approximately 1.5 meters above the subfloor, protected from direct sunlight and drafts. Drill a 65 mm hole in the wall to mount a standard wall socket for the thermostat. Drill two holes under the thermostat as close as possible to the concrete subfloor. For concrete walls, use a circular saw to chase a channel into the wall and then remove the concrete in between with a chisel to run the conduits through it. Clean the subfloor with a vacuum cleaner. Make sure every piece of dust is gone. Carefully attach an elastic joint or seal to the wall around the heated area. This will serve as an expansion joint. Also plan for joints between separately operated heating circuits and adjoining unheated areas. Run the conduits through the wall socket and mount it in the wall. Perform an insulation resistance test with a minimum test voltage of 500 volts. We recommend a test voltage of 2500 volts. The result should be greater than 100 mega ohm. Fill in the test result on the commissioning form. For wooden floor underlay, install a durable plastic sheeting. For tile underlay, instead of the plastic sheeting, apply T2 reflector AFIX glue onto the subfloor to place the T2 reflector plates on top of it. Glue them one by one. Start laying the T2 reflector plates in one corner. Begin with an end plate. The direction of the plates should be perpendicular to the proposed direction of the top floor. Cut a piece of 1 cm by 50 cm from one reflector plate with a jigsaw in order to install the floor sensor. Put some tape at the bottom of the plate to keep the conduit in place. Slide the floor sensor through the conduit. Don't forget to install the end cap. Cut a reflector plate in half to start a new line of plates so the joints are staggered. Turn the plate upside down for cutting it and remove any sharp edges from the aluminium layer.
Continue laying the reflector plates until the entire surface is covered. Slide one end of the heating cable through the vertical conduit towards the thermostat. Prepare the cabling for the connection kit. Remove 120 mm of the cable's end outer jacket. Then loosen and twist the braid. Take your time to do this carefully. Remove 110 millimeters of the inner jacket. Slide the small heat shrink sleeves on both conductors and the braid. Use a heat gun to keep the heat shrink sleeves in place. Install the big heat shrink sleeve and use the heat gun to keep it into place. Then squeeze it gently between the conductors with the pliers. Put everything back into the wall socket. Start installing the T2 red heating cable by inserting it into the grooves of the T2 reflector plates. The distance between the cable runs determines the heat output per square meter. Continue laying the heating cable until the end. Cut off the heating cable to install the end seal. Remove about 40 millimeters of the cable's end outer jacket. Push back the braid and cut 25 millimeters of the cable's end. Position the heat shrink sleeve half over the edge of the cable. Use the heat gun to shrink the sleeve. 
Then use the pliers to gently squeeze the sleeve on the cable and seal the cable's end. Push the braid back over the shrunk sleeve. Shrink the end cap with the heat gun. Oh, don't forget to perform another insulation resistance test and record the test result on the commissioning form. Install the thermostat. Switch on the power once the thermostat has been installed. Keep windows and doors closed and measure the current after 15 minutes. The heating cable may not be covered during the measurement. Record the test result on the commissioning form. You should expect a current of approximately 37 milliamps per meter 